I'm a born hunter and outdoorsman with a relentless passion for nature. I told myself that if I ever had an opportunity to have my own outdoor show, I would show the things and people that we don't traditionally see, and that I would be an example for other outdoorsmen to follow. There's a whole different world out there when it comes to the outdoors, a world we seldom see. Welcome to the other side. Non-Typical Outdoorsman TV is brought to you by Outdoor Stewards of Conservation Foundation, Red Oaks Plantation, Moffa Johnny Safaris, Thoroughgood Boots, and the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are up in Tennessee getting ready to do a squirrel hunt. We're here at the Buffalo Ridge Preserve. We got Jim Kurukudo from the Outdoor Stewards of Conservation. We have Don from Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency. And we have two of our hunters here. We got Paul from Smith & Wesson, and we have Lisa from Troy Industries. Okay, let's go around our table right quick and discuss you know, who you're with, your name, what company you work for, and what did you do? Let's start with you, Don. Yeah, I'm from the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, and I'm the chief of the multimedia division. So I get to go out in the woods with cameras and, uh -huh. and do audio recording as well. And uh, we, we do a Tennessee Wildcast. Which, yeah, uh, yeah, I was on that. We recruited really you for and right. uh, did an awesome job. We're looking forward to getting that show out. So. Okay. So that's, that's my, my job at the agency. And I think squirrel hunting is going to be a great gateway to get me a new hunter out in the woods and uh, enjoy this. Okay. What about you, now, Paul? Um, I'm an employee of Smith & Wesson. I've been with them for close to 20 years now. Uh, currently, I am one of the supervisors of the customer service department. So okay. we get a lot of interaction with a lot of people on a daily basis. Okay. Okay. And you, Lisa? I work for Twain. For a year now, I'm part of the community. I'm a summer company, so I assemble both sites, the toy sites, and just start on the company. And then charging handles, we do dirty stuff, so anything that goes on the gun, we assemble. Jim, now this is our second event that we've done so far. Uh, last month, a couple months ago, I think a couple months ago, we was down in Texas building a hall hunt. Yeah. And so now here we are up here with the state of Tennessee, uh, Smith & Wesson, uh, Troy, uh, you ready to do a squirrel hunt. How do you think the weekend is going to go? Well, you mentioned the Texas hog hunt, and that was a good show. I, I figured right. it was going to be hard to beat, but the lineup we got now, TWRA, you know, Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, has already been awesome host. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Smith & Wesson, who just moved down here to Tennessee from uh, Massachusetts. And then Troy Industries, who moved down from Massachusetts two years ago now, calling Tennessee home as well. So, you know, the goal of this episode and the other ones that we're doing is to recruit from within the wildlife agencies as well as the industry to right. show hey we're putting our money where our mouth is we're asking new hunters to come with us and then what these guys will do is they'll ask their customers and to you know introduce somebody new as well so we're trying to yep. grow participation in hunting with this and have fun doing it we are one thing i mentioned, mentioned a second ago is that i said this weekend this is actually a weekday and uh, it is the month of may and so most states do not have a May squirrel season. Most of the time squirrel hunting is in the fall, but this is kind of unique that Tennessee has a squirrel season here during the summertime. It's going to be hot, but hopefully the action is just as hot. So let's see how things go tomorrow, y'all. And I wish y'all the best. So ladies and gentlemen, here we are this morning getting ready for the morning squirrel hunt. We have Casey and we also have Kevin. So Casey, tell everybody about what we're going to be doing today. We'll watch a dog and then Kevin will have you do the same thing. So Casey, take it away. Uh, this is Merle, and I'm Casey. Uh, he's a barger feist. Uh, we're going to get him out and turn him loose on squirrel dogs. I'm from McEwen, Tennessee, and uh, we do competition hunt. He's a two-time reserve champion. We do a, do a lot of hunts every year and spend a lot of time in the woods, and me and him are pretty good buddies. Okay. Well, Kevin, tell us about yourself and your dog. What we're going to be using today on the hunt. My name's Kevin Yates, and I'm from Waverly, Tennessee, and uh, this is the dog... Uh, so this is Boom. She's only 15 months old and okay. she's owned by Mr. James Allison. I'm actually just hunting her and uh -huh. her brother for him. Okay. And uh, she's an original mountain cur. Okay. And, oh, yeah. Uh, That's she's good. just getting started and doing real good for us. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. So, 
So, so why, why do you like curves? I know you a squirrel man. Yeah. You are a squirrel I, man. So I, why do you like curves? I, I, I'm kind of, I, I like them all. I like a good dog, uh -huh. regardless of the breed. Uh, mm -hmm. The thing I like about a mountain cur is they are bigger. Mm -hmm. They seem like they have more stamina mm -hmm. over, we uh, competition hunt a lot. Right, right. And some of the competition hunts may go three days. Oh man. And you may hunt, may hunt about three to three and a half to four hours a day. Uh -huh. So they seem to hold up a little bit better than okay. uh, overall for the longer period of time. Now, why do you like a feist over other breeds? You have a lot of different breeds to choose from when it comes to squirrel hunting. Why did you choose a feist? Um, probably their size, okay. uh, smaller. I have a lot of speed at yeah, starting off. They do. They might not last as long as the curse sometimes, no. but uh, they're exciting. Hi, my name is Emily Buck. I'm Director of Communications at the TWRA. I'm a little bit new to the hunting and fishing world, but I'm really excited today to be going on my first squirrel hunt. I'm really hoping I, I do a good job and that we are able to knock down some squirrels and just all around have a great time today. After getting everybody loaded up, we headed out to the squirrel woods where Casey released Merle to let him do his thing. After the break, we'll see what Merle has. When we left off, Casey cast Merle out in search of squirrels, as I was doing the interview with Sam. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm with the Outdoor Women of Nashville group. Uh, here with TWRA today, and uh, this is my first time squirrel hunting. Yep, Merle had a squirrel tree. Unfortunately, it was so many holes in his tree that the squirrel ducked into a hole and we never found it. That one's got holes on it right there. <laughs> During the break, I did an interview with Paul from Smith & Wesson. Hey, this is Paul uh, from Smith & Wesson, here today doing a squirrel hunt with Outdoor Stewards. Um, I'm using our 1522 MSR platform and 22 long rifle. Uh, so far, we've been chasing around, treat a couple of squirrels. Haven't gotten lucky yet, but we're still going to work on that this afternoon. Work into an evening hunt. Hopefully, we'll, uh, we'll see some action out here. After moving to another spot, Murrow was released again. And again, he treated a squirrel. After having several close encounters this morning, we were doing everything we could to get a squirrel on the ground. Just right where my finger is. My laser pointer won't. Just throw some lead up in there. Up towards the top? Yes. Near a Y. Yeah, well, just the, when it goes up, you'll see the um, just a clump of leaves up there. Try to shoot that clump of leaves right in there. That right there. Okay. Nothing. So it may not be him. It was all kind of chaos going on. We finally we had a chance to get a squirrel. Everybody's talking, even me from behind the camera. Everybody's talking, trying to give directions to get that squirrel. We had this one cornered, or so we thought, until he made a leap into the next tree. But unfortunately, this squirrel will live to see another day. At the opening of this episode, Casey talked about the barge of Feist, how fast they are at the beginning of the hunt. And I'm gonna tell y'all, this dog is tough. He's not that big, but he has stamina, he has heart, and he can run for days. And he can also trill coon. You were gonna shoot this coon here, but unfortunately they were not in season. So this coon lived to see another day. We headed back to the lodge for some lunch and to get us a second game plan because so far the squirrels were winning, we were losing. After lunch, we headed back out where Kevin released Boom in search of a squirrel. We just get the dog pointed in the right direction. She's a young dog, so uh, I try to do a lot of stuff the same way every time. If you notice, when I unsnap her, I snap the lead. That way she knows it's time to go and uh, point her in the direction I want her to go. And I try to do consistency is everything with a dog, in my opinion. So.
beautiful. So after a long day of squirrel hunting, we finally got one up in the tree. Boom did a great job of treeing it, and uh, after a couple shots, we were able to knock it down. Trivia question. What does the word cur mean? Answer. The word cur means mongrel, mutt, or a dog of mixed breeds. In today's time, the word cur refers to any of several North American working hounds that have been bred to hunt, herd, or protect their owners' farms and ranches. Although Kevin is using a mountain cur in today's episode, there are actually 14 breeds of cur dogs. When we come back from commercial break, we will pick up with day two, the final day of the hunt. So ladies and gentlemen, here we are today on day two of the hunt. I'm with Jim Kurokuto, and Jim, yesterday uh, we had a good hunt. Dogs did a lot of tree and only got one squirrel, but we're going to switch things up today. So what's the plan for today? Tell America what the plan is for well, today. We got up a little <coughs> bit earlier. The, the squirrels outsmarted us yesterday, so it's our turn to, to get on them this morning. Right. Um, you know, it's awesome watching, you know, Kevin and Casey with their dogs. So we're going to put them up the trees and right. we're going to take them out of the trees this morning. <laughs> and so the plan would be too, for me to go with one group, and then you go right. with the hunter. We got three right. hunters. Yesterday, one of the hunters, um, we had four hunters yesterday. One did not return, so one left, and then another one came. So we have Rachel, who you will meet later on here on the show, uh, on her hunt here for squirrels for the first time. So, Jim, let's load up into these side-by-sides, get with the guys All here right. from Texas uh, Wildlife Resource Agencies, and let's see if we can get some squirrels. Sounds good. Time to hear that dog bark and chop on that tree. It's funny how they just get there. Oh, 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 oh. That's right. We'll split up, double our chances, right, maybe right. hit the range as well. Yeah, yeah, we can do Have that. a good time. All right. See y'all in a minute. Hopefully, we share y'all some squirrels. Mm -hmm. Hey everybody, Jim from Outdoor Stewarts here. We're just splitting up uh, during the squirrel hunt here to try to double our chances. I'm with Jen from Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agencies. Yeah, hi everybody. I'm Jennifer Wisniewski with the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency and we're so excited to be able to host you guys here. It was such a fun show and such a fun activity. We love spring squirrel hunting in Tennessee. All right, we're gonna give it a try. Wish us luck. My name is Rachel Barrow. Uh, we just treed a squirrel. Unfortunately, it got away. It decided it was going to hop. We think it ended up in its nest and legally we can't shoot it, so we're going to try and find another one. The soil can's been out here a long time. If you see some trash while you're out hunting, be sure to do your part to keep Tennessee clean, fill a bag while filling your tag, and be sure to take a shot for social media with your trophy trash. It's pretty cool to see two dogs treeing at the same time. These dogs definitely know that a squirrel is here. We've all heard the term kicking the bushes when it comes to upland bird or rabbit hunting, but when you're squirrel hunting, sometimes you have to shake the trees. What you see Kevin doing here is rubbing a plastic bottle up against a tree. We're doing everything we can to make that squirrel uncomfortable, pressured, and wanting to show himself. Yeah, yeah, she about to shoot up there. Yeah, yeah, that bead right, that dark spot. Uh huh. 
And he'll be ready to shoot again if he if he move. If you see him, he can, he may move. Put you safe. There you go. You gotta take the safety off. Hey, this is Rachel Barrow representing Outdoor Women of Nashville. We had a couple of shots and we finally caught a squirrel today. Okay. Preparing your game is part of being a hunter. And in every episode that we film for Outdoor Stewards of Conservation Foundation, we like to show the food aspect. Oh, by the way, Jim and Jen, well, they came up empty handed. Actually, we messed up their hunt by coming to pick them up right as they were about to shoot a squirrel. And it was good times hanging out with the staff of TWRA, Troy Industries, and the rest of the crew. And a special shout out and thanks to Casey and to Kevin, Merle and Boone. You know, it was cool, fun times hunting with the dog. So here's a question. How many of you all now want a squirrel dog? And what would you choose, Feist or Kurt? When we come back, we will hear from Jennifer Wazinski as she tells you all about the many aspects and opportunities of using Tennessee's public shooting ranges. Welcome back to the show. All right, everybody, we're nearing the end of our squirrel hunt in Tennessee. Some of us got some, I didn't, but hey, we all had fun and we all came across a piece of trophy trash. So what we do when we're outdoors, we take out our biodegradable bags from our fill -a bag program and we put in our trophy trash and we take it out of nature. To learn more about it, visit OutdoorStewards.org. Hi, I'm Jennifer Wisniewski with the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency and we're here at the Buffalo Ridge Refuge at the mile long shooting range. Um, we get to got to build this range um, because of um, hunters, shooters, and um, people that enjoy the outdoors that a portion of every gun, a portion of every ammo that is purchased uh, goes to fund wildlife conservation as well as building ranges for the public to come use. So um, this is one of 15 ranges that Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency has built statewide for the public to come use. So um, if you ever want to sign up for some of our outreach programs where you can come and learn how to shoot a mile, um, this is the place for you. Uh, you're here at Buffalo Ridge Refuge, uh, owned and operated by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency in the wonderful Humphreys County. Um, yep. Basically today we're going to be uh, target practicing at the one mile range, which is something extremely unique for this side of the Mississippi River east of it, um, to have a, an opportunity like that. It's a, a wonderful resource in which we can do our archery and outreach and education. You need more? No, no, that was good. I, I, let, let me have you uh, shoot just a couple times more. This is a good angle here. So I'm gonna be mixing it up. You know, sometimes in filming an episode, there are things that happen behind the scenes that you all don't get to see. But here are a few things that happened with this episode that were interesting. Here we go. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm with the Outdoor Women of Nashville group uh, here with TWRA today. And uh, this is my first time squirrel hunting. And... Uh... Wait. <laughs> well, I think he may be tree. Yeah. He is tree. He's tree. People just meat hunters and stuff like that. They'll start blasting just trying to get one to move. Kind of like jumping a rabbit. Yeah. How funny we haven't seen a single squirrel yet. 
Don't you just normally walk out of your house and see him everywhere? Yeah. Oh my god, we can't put you on TV looking like that. Hold on, because I have to remember. I have to say yeah. something. I'm nervous. No, just just talk. Be natural. Just be like, hey, here's who I am and here's what we just did. You need more? No, no, that was good. I, I, let me have you uh, shoot just a couple times more. This is a good angle here. So I'm going to be mixing it up. Before I end the show, I wanted to bring y'all more of the cooking aspect of Wild Game. So here I am with Emily Buck discussing Wild Game. So what we're doing right now, you know, we got two squirrels on the hunt. So what we're gonna do, I've, um, we got, we're gonna cook them. I went ahead and quartered the squirrels up, marinated them in some special marinade, and we're just cooking them on a the fire. We got some wood, some sticks, and uh, we're gonna let the hunters taste their catch, or their kill, I should say. Here we have Emily. Emily says she loves to cook. I do, I love to cook. And you know, one of the things that's so exciting about game meat is that it's local, it's fresh, it's organic, oh, yeah. and it's just so healthy and good for you. Oh yeah. Thanks for watching this episode and be sure to tune in next week as I will be bringing you all something different. A Creole rabbit hunt along with a Muslim hunter who is an avid outdoorsman. See y'all next week.